So let's look at an example of how we could implement firewall rules in, in a Linux-based operating system. And the software that Linux commonly uses is referred to as IP tables. Or the software that the administrator uses to manipulate the firewall is IP tables. So I'll have a quick explanation and then I'll show some examples of how, how we create some rules. First, the concepts. In Linux operating systems, there's actually two, two components of a firewall. One's called NetFilter. NetFilter is inside the core of the operating system, in the kernel, that filters out packets. That's what a firewall does. A packet comes in, it checks the conditions, and then takes some action, does some filtering. But the administrator of the firewall, you, the user of the computer, you use some software to tell NetFilter what to filter, what to allow, what to drop. And that software is called IP tables. Now to do anything with IP tables, you need to be the computer administrator. So we'll use sudo to use IP tables. The normal user cannot necessarily uh, use it. The idea is that here's our network interface card, our LAN card, or our Wi-Fi card. Packets come in here, into the hardware, and of course go out there. And at the top, we have our applications, like our web server, our browser, our secure shell client, and so on, our network applications. The normal mode, ignoring the firewall, is that our application sends a packet out. It goes through the operating system, or the core of the operating system, referred as the kernel, the Linux kernel. It goes through the Linux kernel, and then is sent out of your network interface card. And as someone sends a packet to you, it comes into your network interface card through the kernel to your application, like your web browser. Part of the Linux kernel is this module called NetFilter. And NetFilter essentially is a firewall. As packets go through the Linux kernel, the NetFilter can look at them and take some action with them, like drop them. So. We need to configure net, net filter to take some actions like drop packets that meet particular condi conditions. And the software that the human user uses normally, one of them is called IP tables. So what we will use is IP tables will tell net, net filter which packets to accept and which ones to drop. In short, we'll use IP tables to create our firewall rules. And the rules will be implemented in the kernel by NetFilter. And as packets are sent out, before they get to the network interface card, NetFilter may take some action, like drop the packet. Now, with regards to IP tables, it has some different terminology. It talks about tables of filters. And there are different tables of filters. The one that we'll use in our examples today, and, and maybe only in the homework, is just the default filter table. But net IP tables allows you to do things other than just filter packets. Filtering means really allowing or dropping. IP tables allows you to modify packets, mangle packets. That is, you send a packet out from your application, and it has a particular uh, data inside that packet, IP tables can modify that before it's sent out of your computer. Or network address translation. You send out a packet, the source address is 1.2.3.4. With network address translation, I can change the source address to something else. And in your denial of service, homework task, you are actually using IP tables to create a fake source address. One of the commands sets a fake source address and it uses IP tables in the network address translation mode. We're just going to use the default table called the filter table. A table contains chains and the chains are a little bit confusing so we'll just talk about three of them at the moment. The first three, input, output, and forward. The idea is, with respect to the packets uh, processed by our computer, 
we can treat them differently, we can have different rules depending on whether the packets are coming to my computer, in, put to my computer, were created by my computer, output of my computer, or are going through my computer, forwarded by my computer. When does a packet go through your computer? Some of you have taken the lab on Monday, yesterday. When does a packet go through your computer? What type of computer? Who took the lab? When does a packet go through your computer? By through means a packet comes to your computer, your computer sends it on to someone else. Not necessarily just for ping. What type of computer allows a packet to come in and then it goes out? A router. A router, packets, we say, go through. A, a packet is sent to the router, the router looks at it and sends it on to someone else. Going through, we refer to we forward the packet. So, in IP tables, we can treat packets differently depending upon whether they're coming into our computer, destined to me, coming out of my computer, I created them, or going through my computer, I am forwarding the packets. And these are referred to as chains. There are a couple of other changes as well, chains as well. These are mainly used for modifying packets, network address translation, before we make a routing decision and after we make a routing decision. If our firewall is running on a router, then we normally use the forward chain. So that's what we'll see in the example. With IP tables, we can create rules, and we create rules by specifying which conditions to match. And there's some syntax which is summarized here, but easier seen from some examples. The first example, I want to drop ping packets, or more generally, drop ICMP packets. I've created a virtual network with three nodes. Node 1, IP address 192.168.1.11, the green one. Node 2 has two interfaces, we'll see. It's a, it will be the firewall. And node 3, 192.168.2.21. So the setup of my network We have node 1, which is the IP address 192.168.1.11. And we have a node 2, and node 3, which has IP address 192.168.2.21. And this is another computer. Let's say node 3 is outside. Doesn't matter for the first example. And they have links between them. Let's assume node 1 is inside, internal to our network, and node 3 is external, outside. This is our firewall. So we're going to create rules on the firewall to achieve some aims. And because it's a, also a router, when we create our rules, the packets which arrive at node 2 are going to be normally forwarded onto node 3. So we need to use what's called the forward chain. 
we need to specify with IP tables, apply our rules to packets which are forwarded by this computer. So the first case is I want to stop ping from working. Computer 1 will ping computer 3, then I'll create a rule that stops ping working, to block ping. The default action at this stage is to accept. The default policy, just the initial setup, is accept. Accept everything. Drop what we specify by the rules. Let's ping. We're going to ping from node 1 to node 3. Ping is working, fine. All right, so ping is working, it will go forever. Now let's set our firewall up so that ping stops working. Ping's running, now let's try our firewall. And we use IP tables. We need to be administrator to run IP tables. So we need to have sudo. And the syntax is a bit complicated after uh, when you first use it, but you quickly get used to it. We want to add a rule to our table. So we think our firewall has a list of rules or a table of rules. And we want to have a process when we forward packets only. Add a rule, minus A for add, for the packets which are forwarded by this computer. And now we specify some conditions. To drop ping, what is the condition we want to meet? What transport protocol does ping use? ICMP. So the protocol, minus P, protocol, ICMP. I don't care who the source is, who the destination is, in my firewall just drop all the ping packets or drop all the ICMP packets. And now we jump to the action. Minus J to jump to the action and the action drop. So add a rule to the forward chain. The conditions are if the protocol, the transport protocol is ICMP, then take the action to drop the packets. Enter, watch the ping, got the password wrong because I've got caps lock on. There we go. Ping stopped. Okay, so it stopped the ICMP request 133, it's no longer pinging because what's happening is computer one sending an ICMP packet, it gets to the firewall, the firewall rule drops it. And let's see a little bit more details. We can list the rules. List the rules. We only had one, and let's add the details. You'll see the details. Let's maybe make some space. The firewall says there's a rule, so it's a table. These are the columns. If the source is anyone, if the destination is anyone, and the protocol is ICMP, the target or the action is to drop the packet. And it's currently dropped 47 packets, so these are some statistics of what it's done. If I run it again, it's now dropped 81 packets because my ping is still running, but the ping packets are getting to the firewall and the firewall is dropping them. So that's a quick example of using IP tables to drop ping. We can delete the rule. 
instead of minus A to add, minus D to delete. Pingy's working again. It's back to 240. So we lost 100 packets because of the firewall. We'll stop ping. Let's try to drop some TCP packets. And we'll use a Netcat server. On computer 3, we'll listen. And on computer 1, we'll use Netcat to connect using TCP. OK, so Netcat allows us to create a TCP connection from 192.168.2 or 1.11 to 2.21, listening on port 12.345. The blue one's the server, the green one's the client. They can communicate. Let's add a rule to stop them. Again, for packets which are forwarded through my firewall, what protocol should we stop? TCP. Lowercase. All TCP? How do we stop just that netcat communications? I want to allow other things like web browsers. I don't want to allow them to use netcat in the way that they are using it. What could I do to block that particular one? Look at the way that I started the netcat server. The port number we could use to identify that particular application. Destination port is a sub-option of TCP, is 12345. If it's going to port 12345, drop the packet. Currently, we can talk. Now we add the rule. And now when I send a message from the client to the server, there's nothing received because the firewall is dropping those packets. Let's see the statistics. The firewall rule. Sorry, it wraps. Destination port 12345, drop packets. It's currently dropped eight packets. It's still dropped. Can the node 3 send a message? Node 3 can send back because we specified the destination port to be 12345. The blue one's using is the destination port 12345, but the green one has a different port. So when we send from blue to green, the destination port is not 12345. So we can send from server to client, but not from client to server. We can delete the rule. Watch what happens when we delete. Do we get any messages? We may have lost our TCP connection. So what we did is we blocked our packets. Here they come. The beauty of TCP is that packets which didn't get through are eventually retransmitted. So the packets which I blocked before with the firewall, are you there, hello, sent from node 1 to node 3, when I disabled the firewall, the feature of TCP is it retransmits. So it eventually retransmits those messages and they do get through. So that's the, the retransmission feature of TCP. So a very quick introduction to the syntax 
of using IP tables to implement a firewall. You can see on these slides some other examples and it explains the general syntax. Examples of accessing a website or viewing the rules, deleting rules and more complicated examples. So your next homework will involve you using IP tables to, to build up some rules and to implement some security policy.